Greetings, it's Mark here from Cahoots Photo Books. In our earlier sessions, we looked at installing the Cahoots Easy Designer software. We had a look at the decisions that you might need to make when choosing a product and how to configure that product within the Cahoots Easy Designer software. And then we had a very high level overview of the different components of the Easy Designer workspace. In this session, we're going to cover the laying out of photos onto your photo book pages and the cover. All right, let's jump straight into the workspace. We have selected a photo book with a printed image cover. So we're seeing the cover laid out flat as the first item to design. The left hand side is the back cover. The right hand side is the front cover. You'll note that there are occasionally some sticky notes that appear. These have important information that you should take a note of. It will help you avoid making some newbie errors. In this case, the warning is covering the cover flaps. This dotted line around the inside of your cover is the fold line and outside of that line are the flaps. These are the portions of the printed cover that will get folded over the hardcover board. It's important to know about these. It depends on how you're designing your cover, whether you're having images inset away from the edge of the cover or whether you're having your images bleed off the edge of the cover. What you do not want to do is match your image to this dotted line. So you either want it to be well over the dotted line if you want to have your image running off the edge of the cover so that there's enough image to wrap around the hardcover board, or you want to have a reasonable margin inside that dotted line so that your images are inset. The reason for this is that there are a few millimeters tolerance in the way the covers are assembled and if you put your image right on that dotted line there's a very good chance that it will be a little bit below the edge of the cover when it's fully made up and that might give you some unwanted sliver of background and it may not be precisely straight might be a little bit uh, at an angle it's just not going to look good so if you want to have an image bleed off the edge, make sure it goes at least halfway between the dotted line and the edge of the printed cover design space. If you're using our templates, this is pretty much handled for you. But if you're designing your own, this is something you need to take note of. Once you've digested what these sticky notes are telling you, you can hover over them and put your cursor over the red cross, click on that, and the post-it note will disappear. Don't worry if you can't get rid of them. Sometimes they just hover around and it doesn't seem to matter what you do. They will not print. So regardless of how they're displaying, they will not print on your final book. The easiest way is to take note of what they're telling you and delete them as the first step before you start putting things on the page. All right, if we go to the Templates tab, we'll see a range of templates that we've provided for you that will be suitable for this product, which in our case, we've chosen a 30 centimeter square, large, luxurious, lay flat book with a printed cover. If you chose a book with a fabric cover, this whole first section across the top here, this back cover and front cover will not appear. In your case, the first item to be designed will be page one of a fabric hardcover book. 
OK, to put a photo on the page, we can just drag a template onto the page. We've got a full bleed image on the cover in this case. And I just need to drag my chosen image into the placeholder. And now I've pretty much got my cover designed. The only thing I need to be worried about as we move forward with the design is where this image lines up with the spine. As you add pages to your book, your spine width is going to change. It's going to get wider as you add pages. And correspondingly, if you then delete pages, it will get a little bit thinner. So at some point before we order, we will need to come back and make sure that we have our image aligned where we want it. So that might be on one side of the spine, or we might opt to have our image wrap around the spine, in which case we'll place it on the other corner. So that's our cover. Let's click on page one, which is our facing page. That is a right-hand page, because the left-hand side will be the inside of the cover, which we can't print on. So there's no opportunity to design anything on that. You'll note that we've got another sticky note. It mentions the page bleed. And this is referring to the little dotted line around the edge of all of the inside book pages. In the case of the cover, this represented a fold line. In the case of the pages, this is the cutting line or the trimming line. So the same reasoning applies. If you want to have photos that run off the edge of the page, you need to make sure they extend all the way to the edge, the outer edge of your design space. Or if you're having your images inset on the page, you should leave a fair margin between the, where the image is and the edge of the page. Once again, this is because of the trimming tolerances. They might not be millimeter perfect, and they also might not be 100% exactly straight. So if you run your images off the edge of the page, you're not going to notice any of that. As well, if your images are inset uh, a centimeter or two, you're not going to notice if there's a fraction of a millimeter difference uh, in distance to the edge of the page. So once again, once you've taken note of the page bleed, post-it note, you can delete it. We can go back to our templates tab and we can see the range of templates that are provided for you. You can make your own and we'll cover that in another session. You can also choose to subset the templates that you can see and they're broken up into groups, uh, one and two photos, three and four photos, or five or more photos. Perhaps on my first page, I might choose to have one or two photos. So if I click there, I will see only the pre-configured templates for one or two photos. So I might just grab a single photo template. And let's have a look for some more images. Maybe I'll choose this one. Let's go to page two and three, the next spread. Here we have another post-it note, and it's mentioning the lay flat seam. This is a join between two separate pages that abut each other. And once again, there can be small tolerances in the printing and trimming. And that could mean that the left side is maybe one or two millimeters displaced from the right. If you want to drag content over this seam, for example, having one single image that extends from the left page to the right, or vice versa, you should just be aware that you would want to avoid having any strong linear features crossing that seam because there's a possibility that it might be displaced by one or two millimeters which might ruin the effect that you're wanting. 
that sort of display extending images across the binding is good where the focus of the image is on one side or the other and you maybe have indistinct image content that is not going to be distracting covering that seam and you certainly wouldn't want to put text across this join okay we can hover over this post-it note and delete it and now we can go back to our templates and we can grab a few more maybe we'll go for three and four photos might have three squares so I might grab some of these you can swap photos once you've placed them where you want them if you want to change one photo with another position you just hover over the top left and you'll see the green handle click on that drag it to another placeholder and that will swap your images if we decide we don't like this template we can place another one just grab it move it over and those three images are simply reorganized into the new template if I choose a template with fewer images that image will just be returned to the pile you'll see that the green tick marks represent the images that I have used already in the book so I'm going to grab this two image template and I see that this particular image was returned to the pile but I might want to replace that and I can just drag it over the top of another one and that will get swapped out the only other thing to let you know is that you can disregard the templates entirely if that's your thing you can grab one of these thumbnails and simply drag it on the page if that's what you would like to do so you are free to place them however you like it's totally up to you so once again having perfect alignment and perfect spacing can be a little bit challenging there are methods to work that out but when you're beginning it's better to stick to the pre-configured layouts that's your simplest option you can also do the same thing with these little arrows on the thumbnails you can add an image you can also set it as a background image and you can preview the image sometimes this is helpful if it's a bit small you can get a, a full-size view of it and you can just add the image to the page drop image on current page there we go and I can drag that to wherever I want it so that's the way to get photos onto your page the simplest way simply work through your photo book decide how many photos you want to have on the page grab a template that suits and then put your photos into the templates very easy okay we'll see you next time bye for now